Welcome to our very first Wine Club video tasting. Hi, I'm DJ Kearney, the director of wine at newdistrict.ca. Each month, I comb the wine world looking for six bottles of wine to put in each collection. For a wine to be in our wine club, it has to be, first of all, delicious. It also has to represent excellent value, but most of all, it has to be about discovery. Wine is made in over 70 countries around the world, and wine's greatest strength is its diversity. There's so much choice, and that's the point of our wine club, to open new doors for you and expand your wine horizons. Let's start with the first of two whites in the January pack. This is a bottle of Riesling from Germany. It's called Riesling Incline from Selbach from the great 2014 vintage. Here's a truth that I know about wine. Most wine lovers say they only drink dry wine. Riesling is often sweet, it's true, but many times it's made dry, and a lot of times it's also made in a slightly off dry style. Riesling is a really high acid grape, and a little bit of residual sugar left behind helps to balance that electrifying acidity. I'm gonna pour myself a little glass. Let's have a smell of this beautiful wine. Mm, it has a classic Riesling nose. You'll smell green apple and pear. There's a little bit of a floral perfume and a tiny touch of petrol. All of that is very, very correct in Riesling. Now, I can't sip on camera, but you can at home, so have a little taste. What you will find is a surge of acidity, but next will come this wonderful layer of flavors, apple and peach and pear and lots of lemon and lime. Then there'll be a whisper of sweetness on the finish, but remember that's just there to balance the wine. Then it's got wonderful tension, it's very racy, it's clean on the finish. This wine is made by one of my dear friends, Johannes Selbach, and his goal with the Riesling Incline was to make the best possible Riesling at its price point. It's from the heart of the Mosul Valley and you can throw any kind of cuisine at it. Thai green curry, Vietnamese takeout, pork belly, or just pour yourself a glass and sit back and join the Riesling revolution with me. The second wine in January's pack, and our last white, is a very, very serious, rich, full-bodied white wine from Portugal. It's also a mouthful. Quinta da Serra Jairas Reserva Branco. Branco means white. This wine is made just north of Lisbon in a region called Obidos, and it's made from Arinto, one of Portugal's greatest white grapes. There's also a good measure of Chardonnay in here, and when the juice has been fermented, it gets popped into French oak barrels for about a year. What that does is add this amazing, rich luster, a layer of clove and spice and vanilla that makes the wine very, very intense and absolutely suited for the dinner table. Notice that the color is much richer, it's gold, and that is a little bit of darkening from the oak. When you smell it, it will have baked apples and pears, this wonderful clove spice from the very high class, posh French oak barrels. And when you take a sip, you're going to find a, a mouth filling wine. It's rich, it's really, really intense and concentrated. It's got a spicy little bite from the oak and fabulous acidity. That's Arinto's strength, it's a high acid grape. You want great food with this, a roast chicken, some veal with mushrooms. This is a white wine that you can have with white meat. It's got that kind of intensity and weight and body. The great thing about Portugal is that they grow over 250 native grapes. It's a land of discovery. Let's start with the first of the four reds in the pack. This wine is one of the colossal bestsellers around the world. It's called La Bastide, and it comes from the Pays d'Oc, the region down in the south of France known as the Languedoc. The family that make this wine have been making it for generations and generations, and the foundations of the winery actually go back to the Crusades, to the Knights Templar. It's a four grape blend, that's very classic down in the south, Grenache, Syrah, Carignan, but there's a good schwack of Merlot in this wine to help plump it up and make it a little rounder and richer. 
When you swirl it and smell it, by the way, always give a really good swirl and bury your nose deeply. Mmm, plums, cherries, summer berries. There's a little herbal note that is very characteristic for wines from the south. When you have a taste, it's so pleasing. This gorgeous red fruit, a little bit of spice. It's got soft, soft tannins, and it's just so pleasurable. Crowd pleaser. It's for casual drinking. Have it on a weeknight, meatloaf, burger, sausage pizza, or just pair it with your favorite jeans. Next, we go back to Portugal for another red. This is the baby brother of our illustrious dinner wine. It's called Tinta Serra Jairash, and it comes from the same region north of Lisbon called Obidos. It's made from three important red grapes in Portugal. One is Castelao, one is called Tinta Aurorish, which is also the Tempranillo grape that grows in Spain. The third grape is Toriga Nacional, and that's the highest quality of the port grapes. This isn't a fortified wine that Portugal is so famous for though, it's a table wine. When I first tasted this wine, I almost levitated. I was so excited and man, does it ever deliver huge value. It smells, uh, it smells of cherries and strawberries and raspberries almost a little baked and cooked. It's got a jammy aspect to it from the, the very, very warm climate in this region. When you have a taste, you're going to find it's really bright. There's lovely acidity, and it's just got this velvety palette of beautiful plummy flavors. It's so textured. It's uh, got a nice little spice note on the end. It's a casual wine as well, so don't fuss about it too much. Pour yourself a nice glass after work or pair it with something maybe rustic and Portuguese like a kale and sausage soup. Or you could just grill some sausages. I hope you love it as much as I do. So wine five in our pack of six, we go to Austria. This wine is from a producer called Meinklang. Look at the label. Labels influence our choices so much and this one certainly got my eye. The beautiful cow cutout. It's made from the Zweigelt grape and that is the most planted red grape in Austria. The cow is there for a reason. This estate has 800 cows on it. The cows have a job to do, to provide a little bit of fertilizer fertilizer for the cultivation of the vines. The very special thing about this wine is the grapes are farmed biodynamically. That's a really, really specialized aspect of, of agriculture. It's like organics on steroids. It's a really, really exacting regime of how you treat the grapes. But you do it so that you don't add any agrochemicals at all. These vines are farmed so purely and the wine is made very purely as well. Zweigelt is such a fantastic grape. It's got wonderful red characters, so plums and cherries and strawberries and raspberries, but it has a leafy part as well. So you should smell a little green note and then comes the black pepper. It's a peppery grape. It also has incredibly high acidity. So when you have your first sip at home, uh, your mouth will just light up. It's so vibrant and so crunchy. It's got that little pepper note on it and a nice long juicy, juicy finish. You should drink it like the Austrians do. Make a little Wiener Schnitzel or some fried chicken. It will slice through fat, so a little bit of richness would be just great here. Farming grapes following biodynamic practices is a tidal wave around the world. So try this wine and see if you can't find the purity and freshness and vitality in it. Let's round out January's pack with a trip to our own backyard. This is one of BC's great Pinot Noir wines from the Naramata Bench. It's called Howling Bluff Summa Keys Pinot Noir. It's made by a father and son team Luke and Daniel Smith. The well, Luke story is quite a common one in BC. Luke uh, had a successful career in investment banking and he retired early only to start some really, really hard work at Howling Bluff. This is a very, very focused winery. It's small, they only grow a few grapes and they're Pinot Noir specialists. 
The color is exactly what you'd expect in Pinot. It's a little pale. It's a translucent, light ruby color. That's what Pinot should look like. It has such a characteristic nose. It's essence of Pinot. There's something a little floral. It's got beautiful woodsy red fruit and then something earthy and a little bit funky. That's classic for Pinot Noir. Mmm, make sure you take that in. When you finally have a sip, you'll notice that like this Weigelt, it's really, really bright and juicy. And also like this Weigelt, it's lighter in body. This is a wine that you want to pair with salmon. The tannins are quite soft, so they're not going to fight with fish. So salmon is a great pairing. So is some skirt steak or a little bit of duck or lamb. It's one of BC's great Pinots and, B and Pinot Noir, this grape, is proving to be uh, a really, really well-suited one to the Okanagan. Naramata is a special place for it in particular. This this is a strip of bench land along the west side of Okanagan Lake. It's warm and sunny in the day and very, very cool at night. And Pinot Noir absolutely loves it there. Thanks for tasting along with me through January's mixed wine club selections. Be sure to visit newdistrict.ca where all of these wines are available for purchase and you can read more of my tasting notes and stories. See you in February for our next launch. Cheers to you.